as a young kid, I really hated going to church. I know that's a big shock. <laughs> the only thing that I enjoyed about it was I'd get to sit and talk to some of the old folks, to Jimmy and Maisie and Molly and Harry. They had an average age of about 75 when I was 12. And I learned about life before TV, what it was like during the war, what rationing was like, and all about how they saw the world. The value that I found in church was a diverse community. It was a stock of wisdom that was drawn from people of different ages, races, uh, economic backgrounds, political leanings, even supporters of different football teams. In the 80s in Scotland, seeing supporters of Rangers, Celtic, Wraith, and even that one really weird Dundee United supporter sitting together peacefully, that was no small thing. Of course, we, we don't really see this much in society anymore. As, as religion has continued to decline, the gaps filled with new, narrower communities without that diversity that we used to see in churches. Um, Juliet Samuel recently in the Times said, there's no shared stock of wisdom in times of crisis, only the Google search box waiting for your plaintive question. In fact, technology is a big part of this problem. As the French anthropologist Marc Auger said, the television and the computer have replaced the hearth. And where old religions have faded, new quasi-religions have filled the void. You can see the devotion to environmentalism, the increased tribalism of politics, especially in the US, the rise of conspiracy theories, super fandom, and health fads that are so often filled with anti-science misinformation that's religiously held as true evidence be damned. And even in churches, we can now select a local church where everyone else looks and thinks like us. And that just reinforces the same misconceptions and bad ideas. Where is the collective human strength found in that shared stock of wisdom? Could it be in the workplace? Recently, there's been a lot of research, and I've even written about that a little bit, on the psychological trauma, uh, trauma and the crippling depression that's found in nursing homes, where we segregate in an age-based apartheid rather than helping people live in an integrated and diverse community. What does that do in the workplace to effectiveness, to employ morale, when we live in yet another bubble of our own making? I think we all know the value of the knowledge base of frontline staff, and that's been a constant topic for me, that, that frontline worker who works the night shift on Sundays. They know about problems that you don't know exist yet, and they've often had years to think about solutions. Not tapping into that knowledge is insanity. But what about within the boardroom or the executive team? If everyone comes from the same place with the same ideas, what are we missing? What do we not know that we not, don't know? I remember years ago, a nursing home that was failing, the executive team just couldn't figure out why. They put millions into renovation, hired some top shelf talent, staffed it well, and given it more attention and resources than just about any other home but no one in the community wanted to move in there. They couldn't figure out why. The name of the building was Salado Creek, and it means Salty Creek in Spanish. And after several leaders had given up and left, they finally hired Jorge. Jorge's first move changed the name. Salado Creek literally translated to mean Salty Creek, but in the slang that was used in that prevailing population in the town, it meant bad luck or jinxed. Not one of that homogenous executive team had any idea. Within months, the beds are filled and the home was a success. In the current job market, with so many applicants for so few executive jobs, it's very much in vogue to talk about hiring for fit. Now, with dozens of applicants who are not differentiated by skill set or experience, we look for fit. We look for people who fit in with our culture people who speak our language, literally and figuratively, people like us. It's a poor culture that lacks that shared stock of wisdom that's only derived from a wide array of backgrounds. Instead of looking for more of what you already have, look for what you're missing. Assuming that the people you're talking to have the skills and a shared passion for whatever your mission is, what perspectives are there that you lack? Do you have people under 30? and over 55 in your executive suite? How many genders are represented? Races, nationalities, neurodiversity, disabilities, people from different industries or economic backgrounds. 
This isn't about checking boxes for token members of a set number of groups to satisfy some diversity, equity and inclusion mandate. This is about understanding that if you have an executive team that's filled with a bunch of old white guys like me, or you've got a team that all looks, thinks, sounds, acts like you, you're missing out on key knowledge and key insight. You have a team that's nodding along without challenging you on problems that you don't know exist. And they're not giving you solutions that you wouldn't have thought of eventually. It isn't good for your business. It isn't good for your team's mental health and it isn't good for society. Work can be, and it should be, that last bastion of shared community, the widest possible shared stock of wisdom that can tackle any problem. Inclusion means everyone, even a Dundee United supporter.